What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. It seems that every time I take a definitive position on something, things change. Because today I am breaking the news that recently I picked up a Leica M11. But it's not as cut and dry as it may seem because while I am holding this Leica M11 in my hands, it might be just a temporary thing. Because my M10R, which I recently made a video about, I will link it above on why I chose an M10R over an M11, the M10R is actually having an issue. It's actually had this issue since I bought it. I bought it with this issue. It wasn't a big deal for me, but I was hoping to get it resolved. And basically what it is, is that the chip inside the circuit board that allows the camera to start a Wi-Fi and or Bluetooth signal to connect to the Leica Photos app does not work. Now this only matters if you want to connect it to the app, which I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of old school. I really don't ever connect my phone to a camera, but it's sort of been bothering me that it won't even make the connection. It won't even start the signal. I was talking to the guys at my local Leica store in San Francisco, and they put me in touch with Leica USA, who put me in touch with Leica Germany. And we had this email chain going for several weeks trying to figure out what exactly is going on. Is it software? Is it hardware? And where we landed was, it sounds like it's hardware. Now again, it doesn't affect the camera's ability to function, take photos, or anything else. It's just this one thing. Being that it's an older camera and technically out of warranty, Leica has offered to completely repair it for me. However, they're going to need the camera for many weeks. And so I have to box it up, ship it over to Leica, and then they're going to have the camera for several weeks. They said their lead time right now is around eight weeks, and then they'll send it back fully working. The problem is that throughout this year, I have been unloading some of my Sony kit to invest more into my Leica kit, and I've got professional work to do this fall. I have brand shoots, I have portrait sessions, I've just got a lot of activity this fall, and I need a camera to do that work. And as I shared in my M10R video, I need a fairly high resolution camera, which is why I shoot the M10R anyway. So rolling down to a Leica M10, which Leica offered to send me an M10 while my M10R was getting worked on, but it just, it doesn't have the resolution I need for the commercial work that I do. So I picked up from Tim Lee, which I can't say enough positive things about Tim. I have bought a few things from him and everything I've bought has been as described, great, incredible deals that I just cannot even find on the used market here in the Bay Area. Tim is incredible. And if you ever have any Leica needs, I suggest you hit him up. And I put his email below so you can reach out to him directly. But Tim was able to get me an M11 and it came in and I I've been messing around with it and guys, uh, I don't really know what the future is going to hold between the M10R and the M11 now that I have one in my hands and I've been using it. It actually is pretty incredible. There's still a lot for me to figure out and I, I, I need to do some like personal test between the two cameras. So before I ship off this M10R to Leica, I'm gonna shoot just a little bit around my house and kind of AB the cameras and see if I notice a difference. But already I've noticed the M11 photos and RAW files, they are definitely noticeably a generation ahead of the M10R. Like the way the files edit, even like the color of the M11 file, I think is a little richer, the contrast a little more defined. It's a pretty awesome camera. And one of the biggest things I was not stoked about with the idea of an M11 was the loss of the base plate. I really love this little system here that makes me think I'm using my M6. But after a little bit with the M11, like SD card, battery. I'm gonna be honest with you. I did not expect to uh, be excited about that, but it really is convenient. 
So I'm touring in, in a weird place right now as I've been with my gear all year. When the M10R comes back from Germany and is fully working, I may sell the M11 and keep the M10R or I may just sell the M10R. A lot to be determined. This has been a really weird year for gear and me. I've made a lot of transitions and trying to figure out what exactly I'm doing. It could be related that this was a pretty milestone year for me in many ways. I'll tell you like the three major ways this was a milestone year for me. This has probably been the biggest year I've had professionally regarding new clients and current clients taking bigger steps with my business. And it's just been a really big year. While that's been happening, I have been pushed and stretched outside of the genres I typically shoot in by being invited to shoot in new experiences and new genres. And that has been expanding me really greatly. I've been traveling a lot this year for different shoots and that's been expanding me and stretching me. And the biggest one this year is that I turned 40 this year. And I don't know, but I feel like I'm having a bit of a like, creative crisis. Like, who am I? What do I want to do? What gear do I want to go into this next half of my life shooting? Like, what, what photographer does Dave want to be? What videographer does Dave want to be? I'm, as much as I'm exploring the photography side this year, I've also been exploring the work I do in video and, and honestly having a bit of a transition there as well. So in the midst of all of this personal figuring me out, there's been a lot of gear in and out this year. And maybe the M10R might be on the way out. I don't wanna get ahead of myself and I definitely don't wanna make any more definitive statements on this channel about why I chose this or how I'm not moving to that because it's it seems like it's like two or three times now I've said this is what I'm doing and this is who I am and then I'm changing it. And that typically is not me, but it's been me this year. So just some quick noticeable differences about these two cameras. If you shoot the M10 line, you're thinking about moving to the M11, a few things I noticed immediately, and I'm gonna make a much more deep dive video about this later. This M11 is like a lot lighter, just in my hands, battery SD card, no lens attached. Even with the Peak Design clips on, like this is a noticeably lighter camera. My thumb grip, not on this one, is still significantly lighter. The M11 feels light. When I first took it out of the box, to me, sometimes light communicates cheap, but it doesn't feel cheap. It still feels premium. It's just lighter, which is, I think, gonna be a good thing in the long run if I decide to stick with the M11. Image quality, you know, I haven't noticed that much difference between the two other than coloring, other than, I think the M11 is a little more magenta than the green tones of the M10 line. But I, I kind of want you to see for yourself. So here's a little slideshow while I'm talking. And in this, you can see for yourself, just these straight out of the camera files I took about an hour before sunset, just around my house. I live out in the country here in the Bay Area, which yes, the Bay Area has country as well. And this is just right around my home. And you can see that there is somewhat of a difference between the two files, but if I didn't label them, I don't think you would necessarily be able to pick out what's an M11 and what is an M10R. One thing I will say that the M11 has that the M10R was lacking for me is a nice beefy shutter. I love a chunky click and the M11 definitely has a chunkier shutter than the M10R does. We'll be spending the next couple of months shooting the M11 and then we'll have our big conclusive evaluation a little later this fall, probably around the holidays. We'll get into the, okay, which one is it gonna be? But in the meantime, I'll be doing some videos about my experience with the M11 and comparing that to my prior Leica cameras, which are the M10R, which I say prior, like I've already made the decision. I have not, but I'll be talking about my experience with the M10R and before the M10R, my experience with the M10. The nice thing is that as the camera bodies come and go, the lenses remain and my lenses, you know, you can watch my video about my Leica kit. They're across the board, even if I'm shooting film, which is really cool. So guys, that's where I am right now, sitting here with an M11 when I said I wouldn't, but here we are. So stay tuned and we'll see what happens.
If you've made the change from prior Leica generation to the M11, drop your thoughts and your experiences below. I have like a nervous anticipation about it. I mean, we're talking about a lot of money tied up in these cameras and they need to last a long time. And this is why I'm motivated to do things now because I'm looking at like, what does it look like to, to spend several years with a system? And I just wanna make sure that the system I spend that time with is gonna do the job I need it to do and ultimately be my tool for building my business. Because at the end of the day, that's what a camera is. If you're a professional, it's your tool to build your business. It's also my personal way I capture my life, whether it's my family or projects, personal work, whatever it is. I know it's this, this channel's been through a lot of like, now I'm doing this, now I'm doing that. It might be hard to follow. And I'm gonna blame it on turning 40 this year because that feels like the thing that, that I should blame it on. All right, guys, thanks for watching and being along for the ride. Drop a comment below and tell me what you think. And I will see you guys very soon as we get into the fall season and all of the many projects that I've got this fall. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.